doesn't like clean door jams. Or, put it another way, who doesn't hate dirty door jams? Have you even thought about cleaning your door jams? Or have you even noticed whether your door jams, in fact, are clean or dirty? Here we have a 2000 model C280 Mercedes and we have some door jam that is dirty. We've got the housing here, which is a rubberized material. And just FYI, every door jam is going to be created uniquely. This housing houses all the electrical components, the wires that run through the main part of the cabin into the door itself. Here we have the hardware, more hardware, but as you can see, we have lots of dirt. In my world, that's unacceptable. Then we can look on the other side and we have more of the same. Dirt, dirt, more dirt, not good. So I'm gonna show you a very simple way in which to not only clean the door jam, but actually raise it to an even higher level of appearance. So if you're a detailer or a car enthusiast, you're gonna get what I call show quality results. Once again, like every other area of cleaning, your car, life, your house, you really don't have to overthink it. Now our industry specifically would have you buy about 300 different types of chemicals so that you can clean every special area of your car. I don't overthink that part when it comes to cleaners. To keep it ultra simple, for this demonstration, I'm gonna use the Zep Concentrate All-Purpose Cleaner. Now you might immediately notice that this bottle is pretty unique. Many of you will have never seen this. So let me explain the difference between a ready to use product or cleaner versus a concentrate. I, as a rule, am always a fan of a concentrate. And I will tell you why. Because it has to do with cost. The simple answer is you're gonna get more for your money here. You know why? Because you're not literally paying some manufacturer for the water that they have to add in this to make it ready to use. They're literally sending you what you could call the raw ingredients that you add with your own water to make the final solution. Some of you will think that's a good thing. Some of you will not like the annoyance of it, but fear not for that is where this unique bottle comes in. This eliminates the annoyance of having to mix ratios that are difficult at best to try to figure out. Like when a company says, mix one to three, or three to 20, or in this case, two to 32. What that means is that you take the concentrate, whatever amount you use, whether it's an ounce or a milliliter or whatever, and you mix it with equal parts of water. In this specific case, since it's a two parts, to 32 parts, what that means is that for every two parts of this concentrate, you add 32 equal parts of water to it for the final then ready to use solution. I hope this is making sense. So enter da -da 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 -da, our cool bottle, our cool dispenser. You see this little reservoir up here versus the big reservoir down here? What this allows you to do is to fill this little reservoir, which then you can make your final solution. So this, while there's a little added convenience, but the trade-off is, is that you're gonna spend a lot less money to buy a concentrate. You're not gonna pay for extra shipping costs to ship water that you already have at your house. So it's just economical across the board. Now they've configured this cool and emphasis on cool, by the way, dispenser, so that it's far easier to get that ratio perfectly dialed in. So once again, two parts to 32 parts of water. This spray bottle is a 32 ounce spray bottle. I fill it with water first, then I reach for this. Let me show you how this works, because when you try to read the directions, if you're like me, semi-challenged, you're not gonna be able to figure it out immediately. Let me help you with that part. You take the cap off of the reservoir part and you start to squeeze this container slowly and you see how it's rising right there. So this cool little contraption has a feeder tube that comes from the bottom of the main reservoir 
and feeds a tube up to this smaller reservoir. So as you squeeze it, it shoots liquid or concentrate up to this. It fills this little reservoir and it's pre-measured to an ounce. For all you guys, like in Australia, basically everywhere else in the world other than the US of A, that's where we were seriously backwards. We're still in the old standard measuring system. So this one ounce uh, reservoir here is the equivalent to 30 milliliters in case you wanted to do a little comparison there so I'm gonna do this twice now make sure this cap remains on because as you pour it into the bottle you only want the liquid from that little reservoir to come out and I can tip this upside down and see literally nothing's coming out is that tricky or what there's a little bit of residue that just petered out right there but is that cool so this is why you need to make sure this lid stays on, otherwise you're gonna be have a, having a big fat mess on your hands. Now you tip it over, you squeeze it again, you fill it up again, and then you pour it into that again. But because this is already pre-made, I'm not gonna pour it back in. Once again, how cool is that? So, also, because I have so many guys ask me they talk about, oh, Darren, what's your exact ratio that you use for that job or that job or that job? When it comes to these all-purpose cleaners, you really don't have to think it. I could double that ratio and it will be a little more aggressive. I could back it off and it will be a little less aggressive, but that's where it's cool because you have control and you just trial and error it. So when it comes to these door jams, actually now mix this slightly stronger because I added another ounce of the concentrate because I'm working on a door jam versus car leather or car upholstery so I want it to be a little stronger because I'm dealing with not only dirt but a certain oily buildup that I want to break down with the cleaner now instead of dragging out the hose because that's what I normally would do is I drag out the garden hose I'd have a little sprayer on it I would spray the cleaner, agitate it, and then hose it down. If you have a pressure washer, that would even be better in certain ways because you have such intense pressure that's going to knock some of that dirt and cleaner off with it, but it's not a requirement. I could literally do this like at the grocery store with a few products. Let me show you how. So here's my concentrate. Now pretend with me for a moment that this is straight water it might as well be straight water because it's it's a very subtle dilution of what's called ONR, which that's a video for a whole nother time. Here we have our door jam. Here we have my cleaner. I douse the door jam with the cleaner. Now check this out. Officially, this is what's called a bottle brush. Some of you will look at this and think it's a toilet bowl brush. It's officially a bottle brush. It is one of my cool tools of the industry. Now, you may be saying, oh my gosh, that's going to scratch the crap out of paint. Well, we're talking about a door jam for one, and it's going to be a non-issue. I promise you that, but if you're fearful, then don't use it, because I'll show you some other things you can use. But this is kind of a piece of turd car. I'm really just trying to get the dirt out of this area and make it look a lot better than it currently does. Ta-da! Welcome to my Boar's Hair Detailing Brush. I keep many brushes on hand. Some of them I will use in uh, liquid applications that get wet. Some of them are purely for dry. This I keep on hand for wet. It's great because it's got a plastic handle. It's not gonna be affected by liquids or chemicals. The Boar's Hair bristles are extra soft and when they get wet, they even become softer. So if you're worried about the paint, and it's just effective anyways, because it's gonna get in areas that that stiffer brush is not going to be able to get. So I wanna knock this loose, all this dirt. And obviously, the longer you have gone without cleaning your door jams, the more you're gonna to have to agitate the more cleaner that's gonna be required. But once again, you're in control and you just respond based on what the situation is revealing. 
Now, instead of dragging out the hose, look at what I can do here. I'm just gonna rinse it with a lot of this solution, which for viewer land, you're supposed to pretend is straight water. It's almost irrelevant. I could literally um, rinse this with window cleaner if I wanted to, because it's just irrelevant. Window cleaner is mostly water anyways, with a little bit of ammonia or some other kind of cleaner to it. So that is sufficiently rinsed. So it's clean, but that's not where we want to stop because I want to go from a level eight of cleanliness to a level 10 in presentation. So if I'm working in the direct sun, what I need to be conscious of is if I've gotten any overspray onto the car itself, I don't want it to water spot up. Anyhow, so this is where I grab my semi-dirty, already used microfiber cloth and I simply wipe up the excess water that may have gone in places that I would prefer it didn't. But there's always gonna be a little collateral, shoot, I was gonna say collateral damage, but then a lot of you would go into freak out mode because I said the word damage. No, it's not damaging anything. I'm not using a cleaner that's what's considered caustic, as in it has ingredients to it that can be truly damaging to certain materials. It's a very, and I even hate saying the word mild cleaner because then most of you will think like, oh, it's too mild. If it's a mild cleaner, it's not going to be very effective. Well, I just mean mild in that it's not caustic. It's not going to damage the paint. It's not going to damage the plastic, the vinyl, or anything else inside your car. So right here, we've got a very clean door jam. It already looks light years ahead better than what we had prior. But I'm not gonna stop there. I'm going to show you one of my tricks for door jams. What's tricky about door jams is that you have a lot of different surfaces and nuances and crevices and seams that you gotta work around to clean it for one, but how do we take it to the next level? Well, before I take you to the next level and the door jam, I need to make sure this is completely dry. Now, you see this contraption? This is what I call instant compressed air. Now, you, if you have the luxury of having an air compressor at your house, thumbs up to you. Most of us don't. I love leaf blowers. You know why? Well, A, I can blow all the leaves out of my yard. But secondly, with detailing, it comes in handy because all I need is electricity and I have instant compressed air. So what I'm gonna do is use this leaf blower to blow out the excess water before I take you to the next step. What's so cool about that is that it will literally force all that trapped water from all those little seams out and it's exposed now. No longer can it hide in places that I don't want it to. And I mop up any of that water. Now I have a clean and dry door jam. Now it's time to raise it to that next level. Enter the world of what is called aerosol dressings. I love these. Now there's many versions available. Once again, you can check the show more box below. It will link to my website and I can sh I will show you different versions that you can get through Amazon. I love these because it will allow me to take a lot of areas from a level eight in cleanliness and appearance to what I call a level 10 in presentation. Now that this is clean and dry, I simply shoot this into there and that's it. Now literally, this looks better than brand new. The paint has a nice gloss to it. Every bolt, fastener, hinge, the uh, rubberized, whatever you want to call that thingamajig, everything looks fabulous. And I can simply leave it like that. The only thing you really need to worry about is the line of demarcation that goes from here onto the threshold plate or up here. And that's where you just finesse it based on your specific taste and now when I get into my car 
and I look at my door jam, I am now beholding beauty, cleanliness, uh, enhancement far better than the alternative in my opinion because once again it really is all about the details hopefully I've showed you a straightforward approach that you don't have to overthink very simple very doable for any of you guys and you can raise the bar on your car in all these little areas that many of you will not have realized or thought about it's like oh wow I never thought about my door jams I would much rather prefer that than the other and there's going to be someone out there, actually a few of you, that will be like, oh, well, that's going to leave kind of a greasy feel to it. And now it's going to get dirtier because it's going to attract the dirt. Well, let me just debunk that for a moment. Yes, will dust be able to stick to this better? Yes, it will. Does it suddenly magnetize this area where it will literally attract more dirt into it? No, it won't. So that's one of those phrases that really irritates me is that, oh, it will attract dust in the context of like literally magnetizing it and then dust particles that are swarming in this area are suddenly going to jump onto the surface because I've just applied a layer of this. That's just not true. What is true is that because I've created this glossy, ultra clean area, so the moment any dirt gets on it, it's going to actually reveal the amount of dirt better than a dirty canvas. Does that make sense? So if I have a, a very dirty canvas like this and I put some dirt on it, guess what? It's not gonna show up because it's gonna be camouflaged around all the other dirt. But if this is a brand new cloth and I put a smudge of dirt on it, it's gonna be very obvious that there's some dirt on that clean cloth, similar to this. So how I look at this is a couple of ways. One, I prefer this, it just looks great. Secondly, I accept that this has now created what I call a sacrificial barrier. What that means is I've applied it, it becomes a barrier that now dirt will stick to it and I'm going to sacrifice this as I clean it next time because it's going to keep the dirt from actually attaching to the hardware itself. Does that make sense? It's like a barrier, a sacrificial barrier. So I know that when I go to clean this next time with my cleaner, let's pretend this has now been built up over months because it will take you, for most people, unless you live on a dirt road or whatever, it's gonna be months and months before this has to be cleaned again. I just simply come in, same process, and now I'm going to clean the dirt away that is stuck or clung to that spray dressing, and I just rinse and repeat, and it's simple. In fact, it's simpler, because I've created that barrier that the dirt's going to attach to, rather than the materials themselves. So that's just my little answer to that. And now I'm gonna start over and repeat, but you already know the end results and so I won't bore you with those details. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have a better way that you go about doing this, I'd love to hear about it, as well as my other viewers would love to hear about it. So you can leave a comment. Also, if you decide to subscribe to the channel, when you hit the subscribe button, there'll be a little bell next to it. That way you'll be able to be alerted every time I upload a new video. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next video.